Next thing is that we're going to need to set the multimeter, and we're going to be using an external multimeter, and we need to set it to uh, measure DC volts, which uh, we have already done. And then um, it's telling us that we need to press the um, PC1 position DC power switch to on. Remember, that's the one that's shown uh, next to the uh, AC uh, switch on the uh, trainer itself. We need to switch it on. Oh, got to press enter to switch it on. The next slide in the lesson is telling the student to uh, measure the uh, voltage between test point two and test point three uh, and uh, record um, that uh, voltage value. So um, they're showing the 12 volts now being supplied in, and um, test point two and test point three is directly across the 2K ohm or R1 uh, resistor here. Uh, the problem is that on the board itself, the um, test point two is not right on top of uh, R1. It's on the right-hand side of the circuit board, um, but the test point uh, three is right below the resistor. So let me set those in. I'm going to set the common lead to test point three, and right here is test point two. It would be nice if they put it up there, but they put it over here. And um, I'm measuring 6.12 volts. Okay, so I'll go in next slide. And um, I need now to enter that voltage value, so I'll type in 6.12. And actually, if I put in 6 volts or 6.1, uh, it would probably be fine. But I have to tell it which units I want here. Um, the choices I have are millivolts or volts, and obviously I want volts. And then um, go ahead and press the Enter key to uh, enter in those data values into the uh, database of the unit. Uh, so your answer is in, not compatible. Did I hit the wrong... Back up. I may not have got the decimal point in right. 6.12 volts. Enter. There we go. Uh, the decimal point might have been a comma. Just be careful. Okay, now we're going to move the um, meter to uh, measure the voltage across R2, and that's test point 4 and test point 5. So I will connect it on test point five for the common, and I'll put the hot on test point four. And I measure 3.09 volts. So uh, if I go to the next slide, I'll put in 3.09 and change the volts again and press the enter. Or you need to press the enter, um, there is no forward arrow down here to go to the next slide until we do that. And the response is correct. And now we're down to uh, R3, test points 6 and 7. So we'll go ahead and move the uh, meter. And we're measuring 3.09 volts, so I'll enter 3.09. And again, that's volts. Press enter. And the feedback says we're correct. It's nice if we were off, just like that first uh, slide that we did where we put the comma in instead of the uh, um, period. Uh, it gives me feedback right away that there's something wrong, and so that way you're not spending a lot of time going in the wrong direction. Um, just a tabulation here uh, showing what the calculated values should have been, and if you have done that, and what the measured values are right here. Uh, the one thing that is missing in the first part of this is that generally for most technicians, when we're looking at a voltage value, uh, we use the calculated values uh, 
for our, our references. And generally, if our measured values come within 10% plus or minus of that value, um, we're uh, assuming or making the assumption that that voltage is correct. Uh, so in this particular case, if I'm looking at the plus or minus 10% values um, for the 6 volt supply right here, if I'm measuring anything between um, 5.4 and 6.6 .6 volts, uh, it would be a, a good value. And uh, for the 3 volt values, anything between 2.7 volts and 3.3 volts would be within that plus or minus 10% range. And that's something that, that we need to look at as those windows of uh, voltage values when we're trying to do our troubleshooting or any of our measurements by that fact. Okay, this slide just says that our measured values are within that 10% range. The thing is that they don't give you is what that minimum, maximum values would be for each of those steps. So uh, make sure that uh, when you do your calculations that you figure out what that plus and, and minus 10% value are. Okay, the computer now is going to control the trainer and open up um, one of the components in circuit A. And that's that circuit that we've been working with, the ones that we measured. And we need now to check the uh, power supply uh, set at 12 volts. And uh, if we look on the trainer, it's set for 12 volts, and the light next to that is being illuminated, so we're all set there. We're going to check that the PC1 DC switch is illuminated, which it is. And again, that's controlled by the uh, computer itself. We don't have to manually turn it on or turn it off. Uh, we're going to move the meter now back up to uh, test points two and three and make that measurement. Now remember, uh, the last time we measured um, six volts there. So I'm going to move back up across that. Remember, test point two is way over here. And in this case, I'm measuring zero volts. Okay. And it's asking me to put in the value that I'm actually measuring. So I'm going to put in the zero volts. And press enter. And it's telling me that that's the response that I should be getting. Uh, the nice thing about this is that um, f for the troubleshooting part, especially for a new student starting off, they're not really certain that you know they shouldn't be getting that zero volts there. Um, so this is kind of leading them by the hand to make sure that you know, what they're really measuring is really because of what the trouble's been inserted is really what's supposed to happen. So it gives you that good uh, information. We'll move now down to uh, resistor two. So we'll move the uh, clips between test point four and test point five. And I'm measuring zero volts and I'll enter in zero volts. Press the enter. And again, I'm supposed to be getting that response. So I know I'm in the right direction. So I can see the data, even though I know that that data is bad, because that should have been the three volts, and I'm measuring zero volts. That kind of should give me an indication, too, because if, uh, if I'm not measuring any voltage, um, that means I'm not having any current flow through any of those parts. So I've got an open circuit somewhere, because there's no current. We'll move now between test points uh, seven and six. Across R3, and I can see that I have 12.3 volts there. And I'm only supposed to have three volts, right, if everything was working right. So I'll put in my 12.3 volts. And this is the whole supply uh, value. If um, If you look on the, um, the trainer itself, you can see there's 12.3 volts being applied from the uh, power source. So um, press enter, and that's exactly what we should measure. So 
Again, this is what we measured, uh, 0 volts, 0 volts, and 12 volts. With 12 volts being supplied, um, I can see that uh, R3 has to be open, and that's where I'm measuring the full potential between uh, the top part of that resistor and the bottom. Okay, so as you can see, the um, software is automating all the operation of the 130E trainer so that the student doesn't have to punch in or you won't have to punch in uh, anything off of the keyboard or, or uh, whatever to uh, access the uh, trouble or the part of the experiment that, that you'd want to do. Uh, the nice thing about the uh, device here, it, the software will automatically record into a table for you uh, those values that you entered in via the keyboard, whereas if you're using the PDF, you're going to have to, uh, you know, write those down on a piece of paper. The next slides will take you now through the analysis of that troubleshooting process uh, going through the, uh, the four steps. Um, but this is going to be just exactly like it was in the uh, PDF, so uh, we'll go ahead and I, and I hope you can see what the advantages are of using the um, CAI uh, interface on the trainer. It just makes the, the student's life a lot, lot easier to do, and I'll, I think you'll find it useful as well. I hope the comparisons between the manual mode and the CAI mode on the NIDA 130E trainer were helpful for you today. I know that your students will really love the troubleshooting uh, capabilities of using this trainer for their studies.